What's up, YouTube? This is your girl, Megan. Welcome back to the Hood Astro Queen to all of my returning subscribers. However, if this is your first time joining me on today, be sure to hit that subscribe button because you know you want to. And I want to wish everyone a happy, happy 2020, okay? Hope this year is amazing for all of you guys out there. And yeah, the best is yet to come. So with that being said, today I'm coming to you guys once more with yet another celebrity birth chart reading, this time on none other than the Miss JT. She is one half of the City Girls. And the City Girls is a, they are a Miami-based rap duo. And they've grown to popularity over the past maybe two years or so. Um, JT, everybody knows, just got released from prison. So over the past year, a little over a year, she's been serving time for fraud. And unfortunately, we've been forced to deal with young Miami in her absence. However, she's back and they're back to the drawing board, cranking out hits. They got that song, You Tried It, I Love It, but that's neither here nor there, okay? What drove me to do this reading was, well, number one, I actually did a birth chart reading on Carisha, aka Young Miami, sometime last year. A lot of people did request that I do JT and I just never got around to it. However, she did get some backlash and she made headlines uh, sometime last week following a lot of her fans accusing her of snorting coke on a live stream, honey. Now I saw the live, okay? And I, I done lived. I know what a coke head looked like. It didn't look very promising. Now I will say this as well. Hollywood, the music industry, I mean, the drug use is prominent. And that's a completely different segment for a different day. I might do a video on that just from the astrological standpoint and the influence of Neptune in the entertainment industry. However, um, it's so, I mean, just before I even look at her chart, it's not that surprising to me. But, um, yeah, a lot of people were concerned. So she was on a live stream with Young Miami. Um, and the live stream showed her kind of dip, dipping and ducking off the screen, off the camera, and you heard sniffing sounds. And she was playing with her nose the entire video. Now, some people alleged that the video was edited. She even alleged that the video was edited. But, I mean, whatever. Like, we're not idiots. It's, it's not outside the realm of plausibility, right? People do drugs every day especially celebrities with the money and the influence to buy these things. So it's like, whatever. But I did want to take this opportunity to take a look at her birth chart and to see um, if she could have any uh, indicators of her using drugs or, you know, you know, just kind of a general, a general birth chart reading, if you will. Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So Miss JT was born on December 3rd, 1992 in Miami, Florida, making her a Sagittarius. And when I found out she was a Sagittarius, a lot of things made sense for sure, uh, especially just her personality. You know, she's way more lively, way more outgoing than her counterpart, Carisha, even just looking at some of their old interviews and, um, you know, different things that they would do together. Carisha was kind of just like a... A bump on the log you know very dry very just there very much there but JT is definitely known for her um, eccentric personality uh, just being over the top being very boisterous very lively all of those very much Sagittarian qualities now her moon could be dependent on her exact time of birth she could be a later degree Pisces moon or an early degree Aries moon However, given the nature of these accusations, her being a Pisces moon could actually be very plausible. Also, similarly to uh, Carisha or Young Miami, who is also a Pisces moon, her mother, uh, Carisha, that is, uh, is in jail for fraud as well. And I do believe, I do believe if I'm not mistaken, feel free to correct me, of course, in the comment section that JT's mother was a scammer as well. I don't know, maybe kind of. But now I do remember uh, in response to a, a lot of these allegations going on, JT took to her social media and basically said, like, I would never do drugs. My mother, I think she said her mother was a drug addict. But anywho, 
Either way, you want to cut the cake. All of that is very much indicative of a Pisces moon, okay? It can point towards a person whose mother uh, was an addict of some sort, a victim of some sort, and, you know, the mother could have been a thief. This could even point towards her alleged drug usage. It could also deal with her mother being incarcerated in some capacity as well as her being incarcerated. So, you know, that Piscean moon seems to be very accurate uh, in this case. Her moon is trining her Pluto, which is at the 23rd degree of Scorpio. And that could deal with her uh, directly being a very skilled scammer. Okay. And also it does reinforce this theme of her being connected to a ring or connected to like some type of like a scamming enterprise, like larger network. And it could very well come from the mother, either the mother's side of the family. Um, this could be something that she inherited from her mother as that Pluto Scorpio energy does deal with inheritance. Also, her Pluto being at the 23rd degree, that number 23 breaks down to five, which does deal with um, like technology, like phones, gadgets. So, you know, reinforcing this theme of her committing some type of fraud by either hacking into people's phones or um, electronic devices and whatnot. That trying could also point towards her rising to prominence within music as well or being very influential in music or um, getting a lot of support, you know, within the music industry. Her moon is shining her Mercury, which is at the 22nd degree of Scorpio. And mind you, her Mercury is conjoined to her Pluto. Now that deals directly with her, um, well, number one, she could, she could be supporting her siblings. So she could have some very, like a very close and like influential relationship with her siblings. Like they could be a very strong sense of emotional uh, psychological support to one another but also especially with her mercury conjoined to pluto this creates a criminal mind so it does deal with her being very much plugged in to, into like a lot of underhanded activity a lot of criminal activity she could have siblings or, or peers or have just grown up with a lot of people who are plugged into that type of lifestyle i would even look at her pisces moon shining her mercury as like her having like this, like her being a schemer, you know, but, you know, given that trines are the more beneficial aspects, it's almost like she, it, it insulates her. Like she was able to live a certain type of lifestyle where she was insulated from poverty due to a lot of these criminal activities, you know, like I said, her being very influential. I, I really do feel like she's had a family who was really big in, in this, be it scamming, be it drug dealing, that Pisces energy could also deal with her coming from a family who, you know, is like really big on the um, trafficking kind of side of things. But also it does, it's also very consistent with uh, scamming, um, boosting and anything that could entail, like I said, theft. Now with her Mercury squaring her Chiron, at the 23rd degree of Leo, that could point to where um, she got too bold, okay? She got too bold with her uh, activities and the way that she handled or the way that she carried herself. I feel like that could kind of, that, or that maybe was a part of what shot her in the foot because you have to keep in mind, especially Mercury in Scorpio is very covert, very... Um, mysterious and they kind of like to play their hand very close to their chest by nature so in harsh aspects to this Chiron and Leo it almost it almost kind of creates this situation to where maybe there could be a tendency for her to overcompensate for a sense of like inferiority so her being very boastful braggadocious obnoxious kind of giving herself away um like I said this could be about her bragging about it directly or maybe just being super flashy or something like that but drawing a lot of unwanted attention to herself this could also point towards a sense of like competitiveness or like sibling rivalry between she and her siblings if she has any a desire to kind of like hog the spotlight being very self-centered to a certain extent or even her gaining a lot of like infamy and notoriety within her community, like her being known 
for scamming or finessing or whatever. I mean, which is pretty fitting. She's a city girl after all. Now in true city girl fashion, she's a Gemini North node with her, or excuse me, Gemini South node with her South node at the 21st degree. Uh, And that could directly deal with her being very like crafty. I always reference Gemini South nodes as crafty. And that's because they come from a lot of past lives, many past lives of overly relying on on their wits to get them out of situations. So they can be very like tricky. They can be big time tricksters, pranksters, or just even straight up kind artists. Gemini also deals with a uh, city, you know, the phrase city slicker. That's very much Gemini South no energy. These people know how to move around. They know how to maneuver. They know how to finagle their way into and out of things, which is very consistent with her being a city girl. OK, this Gemini South note encompasses the totality of that city girl energy signature. And if the birth time that I'm using is in fact correct with her moon at the 21st degree of Pisces, this Further reinforces this scamming kind of theme uh, because it can definitely deal with her directly like being a scammer, a thief, a swindler. It could also point to where she's actually uh, arrested for these things or there's a scandal that kind of ensues by way of these things, which is all very true and consistent to, you know, her actual life story. I mean, to be honest with this aspect, I wouldn't even trust her in my house because she might even be the type of person. I mean, maybe not so much now that she's, you know, she has money, but she could have definitely been the type of person to take things out of people's homes. Just the overall like city girl, (laughs) like a crafty, scheming individual. And also her moon is sextiling her Venus, which is at the 23rd degree of Capricorn. Now, this is another aspect in her chart that definitely coincides with the city girl energy as it can create a person who is like, quite frankly, a spoiled brat Uh, that Venus and Capricorn deals with her dealing or engaging in relationships with older men. So she might have even had a sugar daddy at times, which I mean, if you guys listen to their music, This is something that they talk about all the time, like getting tricked or not really. They're not the ones getting tricked, but they will do the tricking. Right. So finding tricks, trick, having men trick off on them and so on and so forth. So she may have been a sugar baby at a certain point. This could deal with her receiving gifts, um, lavish gifts from men and whatever. Her being spoiled. Once again, her being insulated, treated like a princess, pampered and taking it back to that Venus and Capricorn. You know, a lot of especially women with their Venus and Capricorn carry this kind of opportunistic streak to them. So like when they're choosing relationship partners, they can be very um, I mean, just for lack of a better word, they can be very much opportunistic, I guess, in the way that they approach these things. So like only dealing with people, even within friendships that they can benefit from in some type of way. Um, people who are either good for their reputation, their image, people who can adorn them with a certain lifestyle. And if you're the more flashier type, um, you know, that Venus and Capricorn can absolutely create a person who is just very gaudy. Like, you know, they like nice things. They like to adorn themselves in, in, in nice clothing, especially in sextile to that Pisces moon. So, you know, her wearing all the latest clothes. I mean, that could even deal with her wearing these like vintage name brand designer clothes, you know, her being very much like, you know, like spoiled, treated like a princess. Like, you know, if you're going to mess with me, you need to have money. This is, this is what I like, you know, her having very expensive tastes. It also reinforces her family or at least her mother being well respected in some way. Um, Her mother could have, you know, kind of equipped her with this type of lifestyle growing up or just within her family, which is very interesting because I do remember an interview that they did before uh, JT was arrested where she was speaking on. like I think she had got her first car when she was 15 or her dad bought her like a luxury car and whatever. So she is clearly, she comes from a family and it, and it does show in her chart that um, was affording her a certain lifestyle. And she 
you know, went on to kind of expect these things of, you know, in her relationships and that's how she maneuvered. So she's definitely a city girl through and through in the terms of being the type of woman who is very much like, she's all about her bag. She's all about uh, material and worldly possessions and, and how can I come out on top of this situation and get in the head? That's all of that is city girl energy. And this energy signature is further supported with her Venus conjoined to her Uranus at the 16th degree of Capricorn. The number 16 does break down to the number seven, which is like uh, reinforces like this glitz and glamour kind of feel to it. Uh, the sugar baby feel to it being supported by other people. But Uranus, uh, when Venus is conjoined to Uranus, this can also produce a person who does... Um, they kind of receive a lot of unexpected blessings and a lot of help by way of other people, primarily friends. Uh, but like I said, in this case, definitely like relationships. And although these relationships may be unfulfilling from an emotional standpoint, because this this conjunction kind of makes me think that she's the type of person who, um, like I said, when she's in relationships, it's more so about what can be done for her as opposed to like being emotionally secure or emotionally fulfilled, you know? So she might treat her partner very cold or they may treat her very cold, but the, the relationship is like very much transactional. Oh, wow. And she's also a Jupiter Libra. So basically um, a lot of people with Libra and Jupiter tend to have at least one major court case in their lifetime. These are people who can run into major issues with the justice system. And with it squaring her Uranus at the 16th degree of Capricorn, that is her standing trial for uh, that, that case. You know, her serving time or running into issues with the law, especially with that number 16 dealing with tragedy. And I'm not sure about the details of the case, but... This aspect could point to where she stood trial or she was prosecuted alongside a group of people. And with Jupiter governing Sagittarius, it also reinforces her lunar nodal placement with her being a Sagittarius North Node. As a lot of Sagittarius North Nodes do tend to learn themselves by way of um, issues with the justice system. Okay. Um, a lot of these people are also very likely to have like major court cases in life, but you know, with her being a Sagittarius North node, another major calling or like karmic duty or responsibility that she does have is to kind of get away from that city girl mentality, which I mean, I don't see happening. Maybe, maybe when she gets a little older, um, but you know, Sagittarius North node people are ha they have to be very discerning about the people that they deal with the networks the, the the groups of people that they run with and also these people have to develop a sense of um morality you know like gaining or developing a moral code you know that gemini south note a lot of times can leave people void of those things which is why they can easily rationalize any course of action that they take they can do some of the most grimy two-faced double dealing type of shit with no conscience <laughs> you know these people could be liars as well so that sagittarius north note gives you a greater responsibility to be a more upstanding person, you know? And with her son conjoined to her dwarf note, it could be a lot easier for her to do this. So she, I feel like she has these qualities and she has these things in her, um, but I do think uh, it's, it's a constant battle. So she might even be in, in a constant battle between her higher self and her lower self, feeling like, I mean, she could even later on in life be the type of person to find Jesus or find the Lord and, completely transform a lot of her city girl ways but um yeah in this lifetime she's going to have to learn how to abide by some type of moral code otherwise she's going to get spanked by the criminal justice system every time not to mention her son being at the 11th degree of Sagittarius that number 11 dealing with uh conflicts challenges so yeah and she's going to deal with men who come into her life who um help her you know so she's going to be very lucky in that respect 
uh, men who kind of just help her out and assist her along the way on, on this journey towards her North Node and being a better person. So that could even deal with her coming across like very stand up men who are willing to help her. This makes me think of her relationship with Pete, you know, the manager where he came across the girls, he's helping them out. He put them on. I mean, this could have even started with her father. Uh, so even though the relationships with men, her relationships with men, I do feel like are, she does have conflict, a lot of conflict with men, but I feel like ultimately, especially with the Sagittarian energy, it provides a lot of luck. So you being in the right place at the right time, meeting the right people. So I think uh, she does have that going for her. Oh yeah, definitely. Her North Node is trining her Chiron that, uh, Chiron in Leo. So that even supports her celebrity, her coming to be a celebrity by way of like men, men helping her out, men helping to make her famous. And I do feel like her being a star, like if, if she takes her career seriously, can also help kind of get her away from like the, those city girl kind of scam kind artist beginnings. Oh, yeah. And her Jupiter is also squaring her Neptune at that 17th degree of Capricorn. So, yeah, that is directly her um, her court case with the whole scamming thing. Now, with her Venus sextile and her Pluto, uh, this does deal with her dealing with rich men, men who have like a lot of influence, a lot of power, a lot of seniority, whether they be uh, drug dealers or CEO businessmen type of thing. And then finally, I wanted to address her writing skills, okay? Because a lot of people do credit her with being the more talented city girl, given that Carisha is just blatantly like she can barely put a sentence together. And she's admitted that she's had help or had ghostwriters or people who just straight up go in, put her verse together and just do it like that. I mean, that's what the whole scandal surrounding ACT UP was because Lil Yachty wrote her verse okay now with JT I do see a little bit of both going on so on one hand I do see her getting help okay and that's that Mercury uh her Scorpio Mercury squaring her um Chiron and Leo I do feel like she receives help okay I do feel like because I mean wherever Chiron is placed it can point towards something being like artificial you know what I mean so I do, I do feel like she gets help. However, however, I also see a creative like aptitude as far as her having the ability, the innate ability to be able to um, be like a good writer. And that comes from her Mercury sextiling her Neptune, as well as her Mercury trining her uh, Cancer Mars that can make for an excellent creative um, person, a creative individual, a great writer. So I, I honestly see it going both ways. So just because she can write doesn't mean she's not necessarily getting help. Okay. So with that being said, I think that that pretty much sums up this reading because I didn't want to make this video too long. Y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the city girls. What do you think of JT? Do you listen to their music? And yeah, y'all be sure to have a happy, safe new year. Uh, practice unconditional self-love, of course, so that you can love others. And until the next video, I holla.